Last year, Walkersword 5 was released for PC, and this year we're getting this adventure for PS4 and Xbox One. It's released pretty soon. Yeah, 4th of September. And um, did you did you change something for the console version? Well, what, what we've done is um, two two things. We, we we've added extra animations because. The, it was quite a rush to get the game finished on, on PC, so we put extra animations in. We've got characters walking in the background, we've got birds flying in the sky, so incidental stuff, fans turning. Um, and we also had the opportunity to listen to what fans said, and nobody reads diaries. We were told that nobody reads diaries, but people, people still want to know what happened before. So we've put in a system whereby you can go and review all the characters and you can see a description of them, and that helps the player remember if they stop for a week, remember what had happened before. And while, while the game was very clean for bugs, generally, I'm, I, I, was, I was very pleased, there were a few niggly bugs, which we obviously managed to get to the bottom of, finally. So it's a really, really clean version of the game. But fundamentally, apart from adjustments to the existing puzzles, so if, if we felt that, for example, that maybe a, uh, we didn't signpost a, a puzzle or a solution in the way that we should do. So lots of tweaks, but it's fundamentally the same game. And do, do you get uh, do, do do the PC players also get an update where they get this no new um, animations? Oh, at some point, yes, absolutely. But 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 it's going to be exclusive for the console for the time being, for for, for when it launches, certainly. Okay. But um, if you're now done with Broken Sword Five, what are you doing next? I mean, do you just lay back and say, ah? Oh, I give me a year. It was was very exhausting. <laughs> I wish that was true. Uh, what what we had was we had to deliver the last rewards to our Kickstarter backers. Now, I'd I'd promise when we when we launched the Kickstarter in 2012 at Gamescom, um, we said or I said that the game would be finished in April, but one of my stretch goals was to add extra locations. So it was insane. It was insane. Um, so we launched the first part in 2013 and the second part uh, in April, uh, or sorry, March um, 2014. And the last rewards for the top tier backers only went out like two months, two, three months ago. Maybe, well, maybe the beginning of this year. Mm. Um, and I, I, on one hand, I feel really embarrassed that they're like 18 months late. But on the other, our community are absolutely wonderful because what we didn't understand, what I didn't understand when we started the whole thing is that what people really want to do was part of the development. So kind of as long as we communicated, our problems were their problems. So we, we, we delayed the game by six months. So instead of coming out in April, the first part came out at the end of the year. And when I announced that, I was really worried. I wrote the, uh, rewrote the, uh, the, the announce several times. Mm -hmm. And I knew there was going to be a lot of feedback. And I was really worried about what that feedback was going to be. And half the people said, well, we didn't believe you anyway. And the other half said, well, we've waited five years, so it, take your time. Yeah. It, it was absolutely extraordinary, and there was so much goodwill. And we made a few mistakes, but we, we worked really hard. The, the, the nice thing about dealing with the community, we had 15,000 backers, is you see a few bubbles of trouble coming along. And if you don't address it, it grows and grows and grows. And you know, other Kickstarters have shown that if you don't address those, it can turn into a tsunami and overwhelm you. But we were lucky because, I suppose we were lucky, but also we were very aware of what was going on, very aware in the community. When emails came through, when people posted, we, if we felt that people had a valid, valid complaint, then we moved as fast as we could to try and address them. And the great thing is that we brought forward a community who broadly are very positive about the experience and kind of say, well, we'd love to do it again. When are we going to do it? What's your next game? So, so I, I'm very proud of the fact that we have so many, such a wonderful community that have come forward through this whole journey. I mean, at, at the end, you delivered a good game, and that's, I think, what's the most important thing about when doing, doing a Kickstarter, right? Well, we, 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 we promised that we would have a game that was a point-and-click adventure that looked back in terms of gameplay, but looked forward in terms of the resolution of the graphics and elements to do with the music. And, and that is what we'd, 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 and, you know, on Steam, the, the, the reviews are 90 plus, on, on Apple, they're 4.5, 4.6, so uh, Android the same. So we're getting 90% reviews from our, from our fans. And in truth, the, the low reviews are often because the game didn't work. So, I, I mean, I feel confident now to say that actually, yes, we delivered the game 
and people are very happy with the quality. So that was the most important thing. And, and, and also I think people are very pleased that we genuinely engaged with them. So for example, when we issued the, um, the first movie, George's jaw was a little bit too round. And um, some people came back to us and said, look, you know, this is great, but jaw's, his jaw's wrong. And so we changed it because they were absolutely right. Mm. And we get, guys, thanks very much. Th this is, and people were thrilled yep. that we actually listened to them. And we were thrilled that people cared enough to actually tell us what they thought. Um, another example was that people felt that the, um, when he walked against the window, it was actually not quite, um, the, the sprite didn't quite look right. So we wrote some real time uh, light rimming that, 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 that brought the sprite out. And a lot of the feedback that we've got back, because we're making a, a, a Kickstarter rap video, was the excitement of, of, of the campaign and, and the fact that we valued people's opinions. There's one um, young woman who described, and this is insane, how she would have two or three hours sleep every night because she compulsively watched the counter going up because she so wanted this campaign to succeed. Mm. Um, so really, it's been a huge privilege. We, people talk about the friends they've made. Um, one group of fans created something called the Order of the Goat, um, because if anybody's played the first Broken mm -hmm. Sword game, they might remember a goat puzzle, which you're, you're nodding as though you kind of remember it yourself, so that's, that's great. But the, it was a very difficult puzzle, and so in tribute to this, they produced the Order of the Goat, and this yeah. particular young woman is the princess of the Order of the Goat, and, and they made a lot of friends, and they meet up, and I feel hugely privileged to kind of be a, be a part of that. But but coming back to the to the to the actual game, are you planning to release it on more platforms or? Well, we have it now on PC, Mac, Linux, Android, Vita, uh, Apple, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Are there any platforms left? Oh, there's we. Yeah, and we don't we we, we, we you we have no immediate or 3DS plans. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no no immediate plans for anything else. No, I I think it's probably time to move on now. Uh, and where is, what's the next destination? You asked that question about 10 minutes ago and I managed to sidestep it. <laughs> no, I just asked what, uh, what you're doing now and yeah, you yeah, said yeah, that yeah, you're yeah. talking Relying. with the community. Talking to the community, absolutely. So basically, um, it was a, it's been a, an amazing journey for us and I'm really looking forward. The response to the console version has been great. Um, and so, of course, I'm writing new games. That's, that's what I do. That's what I love doing. Um, the, the, the problem, of course, is that it's really hard work writing new games. And there's always something easier to be doing. So, you know, an email will come through asking for something and it's very tempting to, yeah, I'll, I'll do that, I'll do that. So what I do now is to force myself is um, we have internal game jams mm -hmm. and I commit to the team to doing things by that date and, 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 and make sure that I deliver. And it's great to have the energy of people coming to back together because you know, we came from an era in the, in, in, well, Revolution is 25 years old, so we, we started in 1990. It was a very, very different era. Now you have this wonderful flexibility with so much middleware and mm -hmm. unity and all of these, these tools to allow you to rapidly prototype. And um, it, it, we're very much learning from the, 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 the younger developers who've embraced this, and we're very much doing the same thing and coming up mm -hmm. with ideas. Now, um, it would be very foolish of me to talk about new games because uh, and to make promises because obviously those promises have come back to haunt certain developers when they've made it mm -hmm. um, and and so but what, what what I love the idea is telling stories in an innovative way obviously an interactive way the particular idea that I'm playing with at the moment which I, I won't talk about but it's it is very much an adventure but it's not point and click it's the idea that you explore relevant gameplay that is relevant to the story and supports the story and that you reach logical conclusions in a slightly different way and it might work or it might not we're in the process of prototyping it and you know and then I'll talk about it once we're confident that that's what we'll go on to and of course Broken Sword 6 would be great as well um, I've got some wonderful story I'm really excited by the story I've got for Broken Sword 6 which kind of carries on from Broken Sword 5 in many ways um, and, and that might, that'll probably follow. And then I'm talking to Dave Gibbons about a Beneath the Steel Sky 2 at some point, but he's very busy at the moment. And I'm busy. So there are all of these ideas sort of bubbling up, which is great because previously we would have had to have a project greenlit by a publisher. Mm -hmm. and, and it's lovely to have the freedom to decide what we want. But I would always go back to the community and ask you know, their opinion because mm -hmm. we have 15,000 of our most loyal fans 
who backed it. And, and, and their opinion is really, really important because then they hopefully will evangelize whatever we do to a wider community. Um, but when you said you, you're starting on new pro projects and especially for an, for an adventure, you need um, uh, maybe new, new things you see to, to uh, get them in your game, maybe visit different places. And uh, I know that you like, for example, France. So are you maybe just for, for the new game, maybe just make holiday in France or something like that? Well, I want to come to Germany, of course. I mean, it's ridiculous that we've never been to Germany. I mean, ridiculous. So um, the new project, uh, the, the new story idea does require George and Nico to come to Germany. Which Why? Be great. Because the story, the, the story is based on historical backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And there's a very interesting story, which I, I, I don't give too much away, but there was a, a German gentleman that, that wrote about the Grail. And uh, I probably said too much already. And he was a fascinating character, a fascinating character. And I feel there's plenty of scope to write a story around him. Okay. And so you you have plans to visit uh, Germany more often to get more of the, um, what it looks like and feels like to be here? Absolutely. And it's always a pleasure. Um, The, the only thing is I haven't quite mastered the curry verst. <laughs> That's the one thing I don't quite culturally. And maybe, you know, if you're German, you don't quite get fish and chips. In Berlin is a currywurst museum. You should go there if you want to um, know something about them. Well, Berlin's a wonderful city. I love Berlin. I went, came with my wife um, two years ago. We got the train uh, to Krakow from, from Berlin. It was, it, it was extraordinary. And, you know, Berlin has got so much history as well. It's a great. But I love coming to Germany because because Germans love adventure games, I mean, so it's really, so, so uh, it, it's, and the other thing is that um, I always find that the journalists, and, and I'm sure generally, are so well read and so knowledgeable. And I remember talking to a guy who'd read Foucault's Pendulum in Italian, who spoke in perfect English, mm. and he was German. And you would never find that in England, never find that in England. And uh, are there, are there, um, As the destinations you would like to visit for your, yourself and get some... Um well, uh, we had a real thrill um, when, for researching for Broken Sword 5, I went to a place called Urfa in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And Urfa is on the Syrian border. And Urfa is a... Um, it's, it's believed to be a sort of temple, but it's 15,000 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's the oldest temple in the world. And what was exciting was that um, Ulfra being on the border with Syria meant that it was actually quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. And there were big clouds of smoke and dust that are coming up. You could see through the, over the plains into Syria where all the bombing was taking place. Mm -hmm. And I think it would probably be too dangerous to go now because of all the, all the trouble. But at that point, it was extraordinary because Urfa was, um, uh, sorry, Urfa as a city is where Abraham is meant to have died. Um, he was thrown off the walls. Uh, where Job was born and lived. And the, um, the place we went to is a place called Tebekli Tepe, which is about a half hour drive. And we were looked after really well by, by the Turks, who were very proud of their city. Of course, it was a beautiful city. And it's wonderful to have the opportunity to go to places and research. Yeah. The only problem is that my family are now getting really fed up because they know that every time I go somewhere that there's actually a reason for it. And, and I don't see what the problem is because, you know, we go to wonderful exotic places and, 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 and I can research a game. It, to me, it feels perfect, but they're beginning to complain. Maybe try Italy where it's, um, it's very sunny and you've got some, um, some, some sea. And it's also, I think it's also an interesting country for, for the background of Broken Sword. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we, we went to Rome, of course, in Broken Sword 4. And Rome is a magnificent, I mean, the Sistine Chapel and, and, and all of those areas. So I kind of tried, the th thing about Broken Sword 4 is it was, it was written quite fast. And I'm not sure that it was the best of the Broken Swords. Um, and so I'm not sure that the, the, the countries and the cities, we, we represented Istanbul, which is a magnificent city. Oh, my God. Um, and Rome. So perhaps we should return to those places. I mean, Istanbul is great. And do you, know, you know that Istanbul, of course, was Constantinople. Yeah. And you know where and that was named after Constantine the Great the Roman Emperor Constantine think, the Great so, yeah. yeah and do you know where do you know where he was declared Emperor you don't in York in England which is where I live oh. and do you know they've got a statue of him 
and he's sitting there with a sword. But guess what? It's broken. It's broken. No. It's broken. So everything uh, is in a circle. And everything is circle, yes. It's everything is circle, everything is serendipitous. Um, so uh, to, to come, uh, go back from, from uh, to, to, to move on from Broken Sword, you said that uh, you're working also, um, you, you um, want that your developers produce own little game jams and produce games. Um, so you want to, to do other stuff as well next to, to uh, the Broken Sword series? Oh yes, very much so. And, and when I say we're doing little games, wh what we're doing is we're doing prototypes. We're doing prototypes yeah. that prove whether or not. Because you know, the thing about uh, w when we did Broken Sword, that was quite revolutionary. We, we had a different system, as we did for our previous games. Obviously, now, the, the interface is pretty much settled, so there isn't a risk in terms of gameplay. It's the risk of coming up with new ideas that mm -hmm. will appeal to a market. So what's, what's kind of interesting and challenging is to, to come up with a totally new game style that, that, that feels very original, that is still an adventure, mm -hmm. it's still telling a story, but that we communicate or we, we, we drive the, the gameplay in a slightly different way. So it's, it, it still feels like an adventure, but, and, and it might work and it might not. I have no idea, but that's exactly why game jams are so great. And we were looking forward for Book of Sword 6 and your small little projects. I guess uh, yeah, there so could Book be... Book of Sword 6 will be some, some way off. And, and yeah. End of next year. Well, next time, when we talk next year, then, then, then you can ask me definitively about Broken Sword 6. And I'll be able to show Promise? you the new game. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's done when it's done. It is done when it's done, yes. It is done when it's done. Thank you. Well, that's a pleasure. It's lovely to speak to you again. And I look forward to hopefully be able to tell you a lot more in a year's time. I mean, it's been an amazing year. But then, you know, the year before was. Uh, things are moving so fast. It's very exciting. <laughs>